What's up, guys? Charles here. For many reasons, you might want to consider the best low-profile graphics card for your present or future build. But the main reason, ultimately, is their ability to fit into literally any case. This makes the best low-profile graphics card not only versatile, but space-saving as well. Even though we don't necessarily class the low-profile graphics card as a premium hardware offering, and you won't find the best GPU as part of the lineup, it's still seen its fair share of technological advancements. So we go through a list of the best low-profile cards currently available to the consumer public. Both AMD and NVIDIA feature in this best of guide, bringing their flagship low-profile offerings to the table, which will ultimately take the top spot. Keep watching to find out everything you need to know about LP GPUs. Number one, Gigabyte RTX 4060 OC. At the top of the list, we find a surprising contender with the RTX 4060 getting the low-profile treatment. As part of the latest NVIDIA ADA generation, it provides the best option out of the choices, since it will have a great deal of efficiency and performance behind it. It features 3,072 CUDA cores with a clock speed of 2,475 megahertz, which alongside the RTX name brings great ray tracing and AI cores to it. This also means frame generation and great upscaling performance, which outperforms the rest of the older selections listed since it is a bit of a left-behind tech. It still requires little power. It does need a power connector, but only a 450-watt supply. While also having an 8GB GDDR6 memory spec, it is a more modern spec that should help running games these days, not just the low-resource ones. As a more controversial GPU in general, it's no surprise it gets a different treatment to appeal to a different market. With a size of 182 by 69 by 40 mm, it certainly stands out compared to the RTX 4090 on the other end of the spectrum. Number two, Zotac GeForce GTX 1650 LP GPU has been rated as one of the top low profile GPUs in this list. And for good reason, it comes to the table boasting the ability to perform lower intensive AAA game titles in 1080p at 60 FPS. Pretty decent when you consider the overall size of this card. It has a 1590 megahertz boosted clock speed out of the box, which makes it by far the fastest in this guide and perfect for any gamer looking to build a small form factor PC. The 1650 is part of GeForce's 16 series from Nvidia and is based on the Turing GPU architecture we're used to seeing in popular older GPUs. With 896 CUDA cores and 4 GB of GDDR5 VRAM, this graphics card is no joke. It's around 25% faster than its next closest rival, the 1050 Taiwi. Zotac has equipped this card with its dual fan thermal design, which is said to cover more of the heat sink, leading to a much more efficient cooling solution. Number 3, Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Contrary to what many will likely believe, the Gigabyte 1050 Ti, which comes equipped with 4 GB of GDDR5 VRAM, is a fantastic option for those out there looking to build a small form factor PC that is capable of handling games. The 1050 Ti from Gigabyte supports up to four display outputs, which include dual link DVI-D ports, one display port, and two HDMI ports, making it extremely versatile, to say the least. The 4 GB of GDDR5 VRAM makes gaming extremely viable. And achieving playable FPS on some lesser intensive triple AOS titles is certainly not out of the question. Think Fortnite, CS2, and so on, as it offers the second highest clock speed on this list. The Gigabyte 1050 Tylo Profile Graphics Card gets our second spot in this best of guide and for good reason. Top performance, decent aesthetics, and robust cooling are all factors that make this LP GPU a great one. Number four, MSI Gaming RTX 3060 Aero ITX. Although not technically a low profile card, we turn to ITX graphics cards. They take up a full height instead of a lower size, they can offer better performance cards. As with a bigger size, they can accommodate a higher TDP, but the ITX size limits how big they can be and tends to be shorter and dual slot only. The 3060 specifically is the best card available for the Ampere NVIDIA generation, capable of a compact size. It is built on the Ampere architecture with the specific variant of the GA106300, 
With a Samsung 8 nanometers process, it creates a die 276 square millimeters in size that holds 12 billion transistors. It brings with it 3,584 shaders, 112 TMUs, 48 ROPs, and 28 RT cores. These then have a frequency of a 1,320 megahertz base clock and a boost clock of 1,792 megahertz, which is overclocked a whole 1% likely limited by the smaller thermal capacity of the size. In terms of video memory, it has 12 GB of GDDR6, which is clocked at 15 GB piece. So across the 192-bit memory bus, it gives a bandwidth of 360 GB piece. The whole package comes at a TDP of 170 watts and is powered by one 8-pin power connector. Whilst at a size of 172, by 125 by 43 mm, providing a small compact design for an ITX build. The card should offer great 1080p performance whilst also pushing for 1440p, although technologies like DLDSR and DLSS should offer even better performance. Although coming at the cost of quality but can make it easier to run overall. Number five, Sapphire Pulsar Axe 6400. We come to the AMD offerings, and the first comes in the shape of Sapphire's Pulse AMD Radeon RX 6400, giving a new entry into the smaller market option. The addition is the lowest offering from the Radeon RDNA 2 RX 6000 selection, meaning even though the current cards keep growing in power, there are some low TDP options, with a smooth, sleek design that keeps the thickness of the card down, along with a single fan. It is a small form factor option compared to standard graphics cards. If you're wondering about the RX 6400 specifications, we outline the key features. It comes with 768 processors, with 16 MB of Infinity Cache and 12 RT cores. With a 6 nanometers process size, it creates a 107 square millimeter size die with 5.4 billion transistors. It also has a base clock of 1,923 megahertz, a game clock of 2,039 megahertz, and a boost clock of 2,321 megahertz. For VRAM, it has 4 GB of GDDR6 memory with a bandwidth of 128 GB per S. The card isn't the biggest performer. It may be suitable for 1,080p gaming, but not much more. However, there are ways to further improve how well it does with features like FSR and RSR available in games and driver-wide for higher frame rates.